The movie begins in Rome, where riots are in progress after stores of grain are withheld from citizens. Civil liberties are reduced due to the war between Rome and the neighboring Voshi. Because of this, ordinary people demand the right to set their price for the city's grain supply. Meanwhile, a group of rebels meet up secretly and discuss Keys Martius, a brilliant Roman general whom they blame for the city's problems. One of the rebels suggests they should kill him, but the others disagree on it. Later, rioters march towards the central grain depot. The rioters break down the gate and fight the guards on duty. Suddenly, more police come armed with anti-riot gear and with a tank. Seeing this, the rioters fall back and encounter Martius, who approaches the rebels' leader. He criticizes and insults them for their protest and doesn't hide his low opinion of the common folk. So, the riot police charge at the rioters, trying to make them disperse. In the Votian headquarters in Antium, the commander of the Votian army, Tullus Alphidius, interrogates a Roman soldier. He asks about the news in Rome, the soldier tells him there have been strange insurrections in Rome, and the people are going against the senators. After answering his questions, Alphidius shoots him in the head, which is recorded. The senators watch the recording and discuss Tullus Alphidius. Martius has fought Alphidius on several occasions and considers him a mortal enemy. He swears that the next time they meet in battle will be his last, while Alphidius thinks the same and vows to kill Martius as well. In the Votian city of Coriolis, Martius leads a raid against the city. During the siege, many soldiers of Martius's unit are killed by gunshots and bombs. Martius encourages his remaining men to stand up and fight. He continues as his men fall back to recuperate. He soon finds himself in a brutal one-on-one -on -one fight with a Voshi soldier. Still, he gets the upper hand and kills the soldier. At the same time, Martius's mother, Volumnia, encourages her son's wife, Virgilia, to cry out joyfully as her husband is out to war and not cry out in mourning. She says she's proud of her son for fighting for their country and would still be happy if he died in the war, as he would die honorably. Then, Senator Menenius visits and invites them out, but Virgilia only will leave when her husband returns. To convince her, he tells them the good news that Martius claims that the war will be brief and will come home soon. Meanwhile, Martius's men start to doubt if he is still alive, but their questions are answered when they see Martius walking through a cloud of smoke and his face streaked with the enemy's blood. He calls his men to fight, and they follow him as he looks for his mortal enemy, Alphidius. Martius gathers reinforcements, and the Romans take the city. After the battle, Martius and Alphidius meet in single combat, with each only a knife to arm themselves with. Their fight leads them outside, and they fall through a window. They continue to overpower each other but get interrupted when a bomb drop near them, causing an explosion that knocks them both out. Both men are severely wounded and want to continue to fight. Still, it ends when Alphidius' soldiers drag him away from the fight. Later, Alphidius swears to kill Martius with his bare hands. Soon, Martius returns to Rome victorious. In recognition of his extraordinary courage, General Cominius gives him the agnomen, or official nickname, Coriolanus. He then praises his mother for her prayers, and she is proud of his new title, which brings honor to their family. He then greets his wife with a kiss, tells her she shouldn't cry anymore, and smiles at their son. Sometime later, many news and tabloids talk about how Martius, now Coriolanus, should run for consul. While tending to his wounds, Coriolanus's mother, Volumnia, encourages her son to run for consul within the Roman Senate. Coriolanus is reluctant, but he eventually agrees to his mother's wishes. With the help of Menenius and General Cominius's endorsement of him, he easily wins the Roman Senate. According to customs, potential consuls are expected to seek the vote of the citizens in the marketplace as a mark of humility. Coriolanus is eager to accept the position but is disgusted at going before the people. Initially, most of them were reluctant to give him their vote. Still, they eventually agreed to let him be consul. He seems to have won over the commoners due to his military victories. Shortly after, however, two tribunes of the Senate's, Brutus and Sicinius, are critical of his entrance into politics, fearing that his popularity would lead to Coriolanus taking power away from the Senate. They scheme to undo Coriolanus by urging the people to reverse the decision, and they do. They stir up another riot opposing him becoming consul. They call Coriolanus an enemy of the people. When they call Coriolanus a traitor, an enemy to the people, this drives the proud Coriolanus to burst into a rage and openly attack the concept of popular rule and the citizens of Rome, demonstrating that he still holds the commoners in contempt. He compares allowing citizens to have power over the senators to allowing crows to peck the eagles. The tribunes term Coriolanus a traitor for his words and order him to be banished. Coriolanus grabs Sicinius and throws him out the doors in anger. Brutus and Sicinius stir up the riot more by pointing out that the people will lose their rights if Coriolanus becomes consul. The rioters declare that the people are the city. Sicinius calls for Coriolanus's death, 
and Sicinius orders the guards to seize Coriolanus. Menenius and Cominius urge Coriolanus to go home and hide, as the people are trying to push through to get to him. Later, Menenius talks to Brutus and Sicinius, who are with the rioters from earlier, and asks them to pardon Coriolanus, as he has fought and lost so much blood for Rome. Menenius negotiates that he will go to Coriolanus and answer his crimes peacefully. Brutus agrees and declares they will find and kill him if he doesn't bring in Coriolanus. After this, Menenius goes to Coriolanus's household and tells him of his negotiated agreement. Despite the encouragement of the senators and his mother, Coriolanus does not want to make peace with the tribunes and the common folk. Eventually, Volumnia urges him to do so to spare his life. He reluctantly does so. Later, Coriolanus, Menenius, and Cominius go to a TV broadcast station. Brutus and Sicinius signal to the rioters to quiet down their mocking. Menenius tries to convince the people that Coriolanus is just a soldier, while Sicinius reads the charges against him, declaring Coriolanus a traitor to the people, which enrages him. The people vote for his banishment, chanting their declaration. Coriolanus retorts that he will banish Rome and its people from his presence and that there is a world elsewhere. After being exiled from Rome, he goes alone into the woods, surviving with his skill and wit. Later, Volumnia and Virgilia scold Brutus and Sicinius for their scheming and decision to banish Coriolanus. At the same time, Menenius tries to hold them back. Menenius invites them for dinner, but Volumnia promises she will eat soon when her son is back. Desiring revenge against Rome, Coriolanus goes to his Votian enemy, Alphidius, in Antium and makes peace with him. Soon, Coriolanus seeks out Alphidius in the Votian capital of Antium. He goes to Alphidius's headquarters and surrenders himself to them. Alphidius asks his name as Coriolanus looks very different from their previous encounter. He finally introduces himself as Coriolanus and offers to let Alphidius kill him to spite the country that banished him. Alphidius draws a knife against Coriolanus's throat. Still, he is moved by his predicament and is honored to fight alongside the great general. Alphidius and his superiors embrace Coriolanus and allow him to lead a new assault on the city to claim vengeance on the town, which he feels betrayed him. Coriolanus and Alphidius lead a Votian attack on Rome. Meanwhile, the tribunes and people rejoice that Coriolanus has gone from Rome. Suddenly, Rome gets news that the Volses have entered their territory. Then they get confirmation that Coriolanus has joined ranks with Alphidius to enact his revenge against the city. On the other hand, Alphidius's men doubt Coriolanus's newfound loyalty to his previous enemy. Alphidius reassures him that he trusts Coriolanus's rage will lead them to victory against Rome. Panicked, the Roman Senate sends General Titus, Coriolanus's old friend, to persuade Coriolanus to halt his crusade for vengeance, but Titus reports his failure. Brutus and Sicinius urge Senator Menenius to talk to Coriolanus for the safety of Rome. He reluctantly follows and meets with Coriolanus. He is blindfolded and brought to the camp of the Volses. He pleads to Coriolanus to pardon Rome, but his pleas are also denied. Coriolanus no longer knows anyone in Rome, including his wife, mother, and child. He is no longer a servant of the city that betrayed him. So, he orders Menenius to leave. In response, Menenius, seemingly lost all hope in Coriolanus and Rome, commits suicide by slitting his wrists on a river bank. Meanwhile, Coriolanus and Alphidius continue their assault on Rome. They rampage through the city as they have the town of Coriolis. Their army proceeds to march on Rome, throwing the city into a panic, while Rome's armies are helpless to stop the advance. Soon, Alphidius and Coriolanus are encamped outside the city walls. Finally, Volumnia is sent to meet with her son, Coriolanus' wife, Virgilia, and his son. He tells them that he is not the same man they once knew. He asks for forgiveness for his tyranny but requests not to ask to pardon Rome. Virgilia kisses her husband missing him for their lost time together, but he doesn't kiss her back. He goes down on one knee to salute his mother. However, Volumnia stops him, and she too falls to her knees before him as she asks for forgiveness for pushing him for consul, which leads to his banishment. She also gestures to his son, who takes falls to his knee, his wife, and their maid. She asks to speak privately to him and Alphidius, and they listen to her request. She approaches him, falls to her knees again, and says she will never forgive him, as well as his wife and son. This declaration leads Volumnia to finally succeed in dissuading her son from destroying Rome. Coriolanus falls to his knees for his mother, declaring she has won, he finally relents to her humble request and ultimately agrees to make peace. Soon after, Coriolanus makes peace between the Votians and the Romans alongside General Cominius. He signs the peace treaty in place of the Votians, declaring peace between them. General Cominius also hail Volumnia as the patroness, the life of Rome, and the city's savior. Meanwhile, Alphidius and his men wait at the Votian border. 
His right-hand man was right in his doubts about Coriolanus's loyalty. Alphidius promises him that Coriolanus will die. When Coriolanus returns to the Votian border, declaring that he is still a soldier of Alphidius and under his command. He is confronted by Alphidius and his men, who now also brand him as a traitor. They call him Martius and refuse to call him by a stolen name of Coriolanus. He tells Coriolanus that he has robbed the Vos of their rightful vengeance against Rome. Alphidius explains to Coriolanus how he put aside his hatred so they could conquer Rome. Still, now that Coriolanus has prevented this, he has betrayed their promise. Alphidius orders his men to attack and kill Coriolanus for this betrayal. He tries to fight them off but is outnumbered and severely injured. The movie ends as Alphidius ends Coriolanus with a fatal stab with his knife. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.